Okay, and welcome to this month's masterclass all about atopic dermatitis, which is also known as eczema um, or just dermatitis or atopic eczema. Uh, those are all names for basically the same thing. And this refers to what we consider as dermatologists to be the most common inflammatory skin disease in the world of all people. So most people think it's acne, but actually the most common skin disease is um, atopic eczema or dermatitis. Now I'm gonna to refer to it as eczema <clears throat> just generally because that's how I generally refer to it when I discuss it with patients. So eczema is dry skin that's become itchy, inflamed, and red. And then when you have that dry skin and you scratch it because it's itchy, it then becomes thickened and scaly over time. So that is kind of the underlying problem. So it's a, it's a dry skin problem. And some people are more prone to those dry skin problems than others. And why that happens, we don't really understand exactly who gets it and why, um, but it is related to asthma and hay fever. Um, it generally uh, occurs in children, though adult onset atopic eczema also happens. So you can develop it in um, when you're an adult. Now, the, uh, one of the main theories about how eczema is caused, it's called, it's called the inside out theory. And that means that there's an immune system disruption in someone who has eczema and that causes the skin barrier, so the very top of the skin, the stratum corneum, to not function well, which allows water to leave the skin, leaving it dry, but also allows irritants to come into the skin, which make it feel itchy or irritated or inflamed. So that inside out theory is probably the right theory, but we still don't know. Um, collectively, dermatologists as a community, um, we don't know 100% what exactly is uh, causing eczema or why it's happening, though uh, there's a lot of pointers to the immune system and to various interleukins and things happening in the immune system that go um, awry in people with atopic eczema uh, to then bring on the problem. Now, if you have eczema, you know that it's not fun to have. Um, in children, in infants, it affects the face and the head, and so little, little babies. Um, but then as you get older, um, it affects different areas of the body. So um, when a child becomes a toddler or becomes a little bit older, um, they tend to get flexural eczema. So that's in the um, arm, what people like the anticubital fossa, so the elbow creases behind the knees, um, around the neck, in the armpits. So those are the more classic places to have eczema from kind of childhood onwards and then into adulthood. Now, facial eczema is um, also very difficult to deal with, of course, um, and I, I wrote a chapter about that in my book, Skin Intelligence, so I did write a whole chapter about uh, facial eczema. Um, so facial eczema presents as obviously dry skin that's scaly and red, and as, as it gets worse over time, the skin becomes thickened and flaky and scaly, and then you see that around the eyes with wrinkling of the skin around the eyes. Um, that's the primary kind of area that becomes affected um, if you have eczema around the eyes and that skin becomes dry and wrinkly over time um, and it can be very distressing for patients. So not only is it uncomfortable, but it doesn't look very nice and it leads to the um, area around the eye looking wrinkly and red and irritated and sometimes with some pigmentation as well. So that is kind of um, what eczema looks like and what may be driving it. Um, now, if you have eczema, you're probably thinking, okay, what can I do about it? Which is obviously the uh, most important question because we need to get your skin to be healthy and normal again. Um, there are three kind of categories of treatment. The first category is general treatments, and that involves using um, a moisturizing gentle body wash and regularly using body moisturizers or face moisturizers. The greasier the moisturizer, the better, um, but of course, most people don't like using super greasy moisturizers, especially during the day, because your clothes stick to it and it's just very uncomfortable, especially if it's hot outside, it's just not nice to use. So creams and gels can be used as well, but they do need to be applied more often. So um, greasy moisturizers, they kind of stay on and they kind of lock the water in um, and they're very good. But if you're not gonna use a greasy one because you need to wear clothes, um, then a cream is your best option. Uh, and then you may have to reapply that during the day. Um, but most people, once their skin is under control, they can use a moisturizer twice daily, so in the morning and the evening. Now that's really important. And that's by far the most important maintenance thing that any patient can do if they have a tendency towards eczema or they have eczema. So getting yourself into that routine where you're using a very bland moisturizing cleanser 
a lot of brands make them, um, Cetaphil, CeraVe, uh, QV, um, there's, there's just so many brands, Apriderm, um, Aveeno, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different brands. So you just go for the one that you like, and I always say what you like and can afford. So if you like QV, that's great. If you like Aveeno, Fab, whatever you like, just use that one, because um, they're all pretty similar. So it, it's just important that you use one that you like. So with the cleanser, you, you wash with that hydrating cleanser and then you apply a um, moisturizer twice daily. So this is when moisturizing becomes really important in order to maintain the skin um, in people who have a tendency towards eczema or to help the skin get better. Because it does help the skin get better though, that's not the mainstay of treatment. Um, it's important also to remember that any moisturizer will help uh, restore the skin barrier function. So I know that a lot of people say that, oh, um, you know, you have to use a special moisturizer to restore skin barrier function. That's not true. Any moisturizer will do the job. So you don't have to buy special expensive ceramide infused, um, rose water infused moisturizer. You can just basically use whatever moisturizer you want. The next step of treatment would be topical treatment. So that, that's your topical steroids. Now, when used correctly as prescribed, topical steroids are very safe and very effective. So there's a lot of fear around topical steroids. And that fear is the primary reason why people um, don't get better eczema because they're scared of using topical steroids. So your doctor will prescribe for you the correct strength of topical steroid for the eczema you have, and they should tell you how to use it. So the way we generally teach people, patients how to use it is a fingertip unit. So um, there's a fingertip unit scale, so that tells you exactly how much steroid to use on your body on a certain area. So whether it's your arm, you need perhaps three fingertip units, your torso, your leg, um, a one fingertip unit is this much of your finger, um, it's the tip of your finger, and you put that amount of topical steroid on. That is the correct amount to use according to the scale. Um, and then if you use the steroid that's prescribed for you and you use it correctly, that should help your eczema get a lot better pretty quickly. So the, the biggest problem I see in clinic is that patients under treat their eczema, either because they're given a steroid that's not strong enough for their problem, or they're not told how to use it correctly. So you should be using it on a reducing regime once your skin is better, um, and also obviously incorporating your moisturizer. These topical steroids are very, very effective. There are also non-steroid anti-inflammatory uh, creams like a topical tacrolimus, and you may have heard of these as Protopic or Eladel. These are great for facial eczema, they're licensed for certain age groups, so certain percentages of Protopic and Eladel um, can be used in children and so on. But they are very good for eyelids. They're very good for facial eczema, though Protopic can be a bit stingy. So talk to your doctor about those alternatives. Um, if you're finding that perhaps 1% hydrocortisone isn't doing the job for your face, you may do better on one of these alternatives. Now, the next step of treatment, if uh, topical treatments don't work, you can always try phototherapy, though that is a logistically problem for some people. And the next step from that would be to use systemic treatments, so tablets or injectable treatments. Now, that's a whole world on its own. So um, I'm not going to go into the various systemic treatments available, but there are a lot of them. So if you feel like the topical steroids have not done the job for you, definitely speak to your doctor about being referred to a dermatologist and seeing whether you'd be appropriate for some type of tablet treatment um, if you're really struggling. Now, one thing that I do get asked about a lot, which I'm going to touch on here now at the end of this um, video, is stero stero steroid withdrawal syndrome. Now, I have never come across that from a medical perspective. So what I think is happening in this scenario with steroid withdrawal syndrome is that patients are just under using the steroid. So when you use it for five days and you stop, your eczema comes back. That's not because you've withdrawn the steroid and you're, you're some, there's some kind of reaction to that, it's just because your eczema is still there and hasn't gotten better. So it's important to use the correct steroid in the correct amount, so the correct volume, the correct uh, times of day, like twice a day, for example, if that's what your doctor told you, for the correct amount of time. And to me, the correct amount of time is until your skin is clear. So um, that is really the goal, obviously. The goal is for your eczema to be gone. So that's what you're aiming for with your treatment. So um, talk to your doctor about that. You want to use the cream until your eczema is gone and better, and then you learn to maintain that clearance. Um, so the steroid withdrawal syndrome, I don't think that's a real thing. Uh, I do think it's something that happens because people are under treating their eczema. So there you go, that's um, a 10 minute masterclass on um, atopic eczema or dermatitis. I hope you found that useful um, and leave any comments below or uh, DM me on Instagram if you have any questions.